Hi everyone. I wanted to record this video today on the topic of low budget movies, why I enjoy them, why I admire them, and what I learned from them. Now on one hand it's obvious because I make low budget movies myself, very low budget, zero dollar budget movies. Uh, it's probably just natural that I would look at other low budget films and you know see how things are done and see how filmmakers uh, accomplish different things with very limited resources. Well, yes, that's, at the, that's behind a lot of it. But I think there's more to it than that. And it's one of the things that draws me back to uh, following low-budget films. It's one of the big reasons that I launched this uh, YouTube channel was to help to celebrate low-budget filmmaking and to spotlight low-budget films that are out there. And I think what, what, I, what I find very compelling about low-budget filmmaking, especially, and I'm not talking about, you know, there's relative term, you know, definitions of low-budget. I mean, you could hear movies that are, cost millions of dollars to, to uh, be made can be referred to as low-budget. But I'm really talking about films that are being made entirely, independently, outside of, um, you know, corporate funding, uh, that are being made by people who want to be making them. And I think that's really what it comes down to, is that there's a certain personal element to low-budget filmmaking that I find extremely compelling. But there's also so much that can be learned from watching um, all kinds of low-budget films. Low-budget films that came out of Hollywood back in the 30s and 40s, you know, the, the Poverty Row Studios, um, all the way to, you know, the films of Roger Corman in the 1960s and 70s, and, uh, you know, low-budget films that are being made, all, a whole variety of films that are being made today. Obviously, it's way beyond the scope of this video to get into all these specific examples. I'm not, uh, not going to try to do that here, but rather I just want to talk about a few commonalities that I see uh, that I continue to find really valuable in watching these films. Now, I've said this before, and I, I think it's... Um, I just I, I, I think it's very true, which is that when I've watched movies over the years, it's we all have certain films, you know, I think probably big, big movies, uh, movies that many people have seen, uh, films that probably cost a lot of money to make that uh, really inspire us, certain directors, uh, perhaps. Uh, and those you know, those kind of big movies, the A pictures, if you will, I think for a lot of, of uh, in a lot of cases, they provide something to aspire to as filmmakers. When we see a film that really uh, moves us in some way, that accomplishes something really, uh, really, really special, you know, that uh, is something to aspire to. But I think low budget films and B movies show how to do it. And what I mean by that is that when you watch uh, a, a film made on a limited budget with limited resources, it gives, at least me, it gives me an appreciation for what the filmmakers, what the uh, people behind the film had to do in order to pull that off uh, with very limited resources at their disposal. And I think because of that, I continue to draw so much inspiration when I go back and look at low-budget movies, again, from all across, you know, spanning all across the decades. And it's been said, um, you know, numerous, numerous people have said this, that if you go back and look at some of the old B-movies from, you know, Hollywood in the 1940s, for example, some of the old film noir movies, perhaps, that in many cases, they're, uh, so they're sometimes more interesting than the big A studio pictures of the same era. And I think part of that is because the, because the budgets were lower, there was less at stake, filmmakers could take more chances. Um, one example that I'd give, the film that means a great deal to me, is Detour by Edgar Ulmer. And this is a 1945 you know, B film noir movie, uh, incredibly inventive. I, I still, I remember the first time that I saw it and I was so impressed with, I mean, it was obviously a very low budget movie but I was so impressed with how imaginative and creative it was. And uh, the, 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 there was a scene towards the end where the camera is moving around a room, uh, 
do, you know, kind of dollying in on certain objects, going in and out of focus as it moves around the room. And I was so impressed with this sequence. And it's really not something you would see in a major Hollywood film of that era. Um, another B movie from the uh, 40s that I love is, uh, is Gun Crazy by uh, Joseph H. Lewis. This is another film that uh, has some really, for its time, some very innovative uh, scenes. Like a, a, the, there's a, a bank robbery sequence shot with a handheld camera inside the back of the car that you know plays out in a very long take. And uh, scenes like this stand out because they weren't commonly done in Hollywood films of that time. But you know, by working on a lower budget, having less at stake, perhaps, it, it freed the filmmakers to experiment. And I think that that is a very central point to why I continue to love low-budget films and watching them and discovering them. And that's one of the things I think is so great about YouTube and with people uploading their films and releasing their films onto YouTube is that it makes it possible to see uh, a very wide variety of approaches, you know, to see things that still aren't being done in the mainstream uh, commercial cinema. So I think the appeal of low-budget movies, uh, as a filmmaker I'm speaking here, uh, the appeal of low-budget movies is uh, basically consistent. Uh, it, you know, they may look different. Um, some of the chances that filmmakers are taking may be, uh, like the specifics may be different. But I think at the end of the day, there's this kind of unbridled uh, creative freedom that's possible when you're working on a low budget. And yes, you may not have, you, you, you know, you may not have the money and the resources to, to think as big as a, uh, you know, a, a Hollywood blockbuster. But, but there, there is still that, uh, the, the ideas are still there, the creativity is there. And I think in many ways surpasses what Hollywood is doing. Because Hollywood, uh, uh, you know, um, expensive films coming out of the studio system basically have to play it safe for commercial reasons. And I don't want to turn this into a, you know, kind of a, a battle between independent filmmaking and Hollywood or anything, but I do think that that difference is worth highlighting and, and celebrating, in fact. I think that uh, it, it's something that's really, it's something that low-budget independent films can do that commercial big-budget studio pictures really can't in, in, in many, if, if not most cases. Um, like I said, as a filmmaker, I make movies on an extremely low budget. In most cases, I spend pretty much zero dollars on a film. Uh, that's not entirely by choice. I mean, it really comes down to what I can afford to spend. Um, and, but for me, taking these lessons from low budget filmmaking has given me a, a lot of ideas and a lot of courage, I think, to try things in filmmaking that, you know, might seem uh, really daunting at first. But then you, you look at these, uh, a lot of these films out there, again, I'm talking, you know, spanning the whole dec the decades, that you look at these films and remember that if you have the ideas, it's, uh, it's, it's possible to find ways of putting them on the screen. And it may not look the way that you originally envisioned but with that kind of creativity and imagination and resourcefulness you can find a way to get those ideas on the screen um, and that again is something I continue to take from watching low-budget movies that continues to inspire me and continues to nourish me creatively is uh, to, to think about uh, rather than to think about it in terms of what you can't do it's to think about it in terms of what you can do and perhaps if anybody's watching this who is either just starting out making their own films or thinking about making their own films, that is just something I would, I would encourage you to th think of, is to think about what you can do. And, you know, yes, recognize that maybe not every idea you have you can film in, in exactly the way that you originally envisioned it. But I think the important thing is to think creatively and to, to really think imaginatively about how you can pull these ideas off and get them across on the screen. Now, like I said, I, didn't want, I don't want to turn this, you know, this is not meant to be a, uh, you know, I don't want to go through every 
kind of uh, low budget film that I that I watch or uh, get into some sort of you know go through like an encyclopedia of different different movies that I'm thinking of. But uh, you know, I I would just you know say if you're if you're out there um, embarking on your own low budget and independent filmmaking career, uh, it's worth checking out. Um, you know, it's worth checking out any films that you can that uh, inspire you, not just artistically, but that, that kind of help, maybe can help uh, show you how you can do certain things. You know, whether that takes the form of watching um, some older films, as it has for me over the years, uh, or whether you're watching a lot of the exciting new work that's coming out on YouTube, which I'm really delving into and finding a whole kind of a whole new uh, set of inspiration in. Uh, I think wherever you look for it, wherever you find it, I should say, uh, it's worth drawing on it, thinking about it, and and celebrating it. And remember that when you see these low-budget films, each one represents a triumph of the creativity of the filmmaker to bring it to the screen. And when you're you know getting daunted about your own projects and when it feels like you just don't have the, the, the money or the resources that you'd like to... Uh, to do what you want to do, just think about all those filmmakers out there who have pulled it off and and think about the fact that their films are still out there. Think about the fact that you've presumably, if you're thinking about the film, you've presumably seen it. And you, you never know what you create, how it'll, it will uh, affect people and touch people. And I think that is one of the most beautiful things about this, uh, about, about making low-budget films, is that... Uh, there's no one. To t there's really no one to tell you no. At the end of the day, your 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 limits are your uh, creativity, your imagination, and finding ways to put these ideas on the screen. And once you can start to work within, um, you know what's possible for you. It's uh, it's a wonderful thing. And I think that if you do something that is personal, meaningful for you. Uh, that has some significance for you, you know, that's not just being made for crass commercial reasons, uh, but you do something personal and put it out there for the world to see, uh, people will respond to that. Uh, it, you know, it may not happen right away, but, you know, put the work out there, leave it out there, and I, I think it's, uh, it, you know, people, there will be people who respond to it. Anyway, that's... Uh, that's a lot of thoughts on this subject, I know. Um, but they've been on my mind lately, and I just wanted to get them down on, on the camera here. And, uh, you know, hopefully just put them out there as words of encouragement, uh, words of inspiration, maybe to anyone who needs to hear it right now with their filmmaking. And just keep creating. And that's really what it is. Just keep creating and finding ways to get your ideas out there. Anyway, thanks, as always, for watching. And I will talk to you later.